Okay, so the tool I'm going to be going over today is Process Dump. It's actually one of my favorite tools. What it does is it dumps executables or DLLs from memory back to disk. It will repackage them so you can open it as you would open a normal executable or DLL with, uh, with a disassembler or debugger. Um, it is on GitHub. It's completely open source. You can compile it from source code if you want, or if not, there is the compiled binaries here. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit about what it does and why I find it useful. So one of my favorite features of PD is its ability to keep track of clean hashes, which are the hashes of modules or executables that should not be dumped in a full system dump or a process dump. Um, the way we do this is using the dbgen command. What this will do is it will go through basically a couple of known folders on the system and get a list of modules and executables, hash those, then put them in the database. The, uh, the gen quit command does the same kind of thing but only for running processes which makes it a little bit faster. You should do this uh, after you install any new software and this right before you run any malware on the system. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the gen quit command right now. It'll take a little while but not quite as slow as the gen command. Okay, so now that's done, it'll have updated the clean hashes database with every executable running on the system, which means anything we run from now onwards that is not a system process will be uh, it will be picked up by PD if we run a dump. So here we have the same system infected with TrickBot. We have tsip.exe, which is the TrickBot main process, and then below it we have a bunch of SVC hosts. These are actually legitimate SVC host processes. They've just been used to host uh, TrickBot's malicious modules. So the SVC host itself is, uh, it will be in our hashes database, but the modules in it shouldn't. So I'm gonna actually just go ahead and dump, uh, I'm gonna do a full system dump because we've got multiple processes we want to look at. Okay, so once the dump is complete, we can go to our dump folder and see that there's a bunch of files with weird names. So I'm going to go ahead and just explain the naming convention, it's quite simple. You've got the name of the uh, process that was dumped from, the process ID of the process the dump came from, the name of the module within that process, the base address of the module within that process, and whether it's x64 or x86. So in this case the dump came from svchost.exe, it's probably one of these ones. The process ID is in hex and these are in decimals, so it won't match. And the name inside it is code chunk. Now what this is, is actually a, a PD generated name, which means that it wasn't actually a module that was dumped, but an executable section which wasn't recognized. Uh, that is usually shellcode. It could just be some kind of object table. It's basically just any section with executable attributes that does not look like a portable executable map section. Next up we've got hidden module. Now hidden module is a very good flag for IR. It means that the module was not in the PEB's module list, which means it was not loaded normally used by the Windows loader. Uh, in most cases it means it's either a DLL that was mapped manually by some malware or it was a portable executable which was injected into a process. In, uh, in both of these cases, that means that it was probably malware that, uh, that loaded this module. So these are the ones you want to go for first. Then finally, we have the tsic.exe. Now you can see one of the name is tsic.exe, which means it's the actual main process which was dumped. And the second one is hidden module, which means it's a module within the process which was dumped. And you can see that in these cases they're both EXEs instead of DLLs, which means that this module is not a DLL, it was an EXE which was run into the memory, which is commonly done by packers. What will happen is the encrypted executable will be decrypted by the packer, uh, it will be run into the same memory of as the packer, and then the packer will either erase itself or keep itself in memory and then transfer execution to the decrypted executable. So in this case, 
I would say that hidden module is most likely to be the decrypted executable and t6.exe is probably the packer.